we've already mentioned the term neuroglial cells or neuro neuroglia, which means nerve glue. And when they were first learning about the nervous system way back when, when they were starting to dissect out cadavers hundreds of years ago, they thought that these cells just helped glue neurons together. So neuroglia means nerve glue. In reality, these cells have incredible functions and are unbelievably important to the health and well-being of your central nervous system, your peripheral nervous system, and therefore us. These are the cells that are going to be associated with the central nervous system. They are the support cells of the neurons. Let's delve into them. Ependymal cells. Remember how epithelium starts with EP? And epithelium are going to line cavities or cover things. Ependymal cells are going to line the central canal, which is a canal within the spinal cord, and they will also line ventricles, which are basically holes in your brain. So if anybody ever tells you you have holes in your brain, you do. They're called the ventricles. They are either simple cuboidal epithelium or simple columnar epithelium. They are going to produce cerebral spinal fluid. So they'll produce it, they'll help circulate it, and they'll help monitor it to make sure that it is doing its job and is healthy. And you can see the ependymal cells marked up there in the upper right, kind of pinkish, and they are surrounding, in this case, the central canal. We'll talk more about the central nervous, uh, the cerebrospinal fluid when we talk about the brain and the spinal cord in the central nervous system, so hang tight on those. The microglia are basically the macrophages of the central nervous system. They are mobile. They are phagocytic. They are going to remove debris, waste products, pathogens. Their numbers will spike when the patient has an infection or illness or a stroke. Actually, pretty cool little cells. They're very important. Astrocytes are these big star-shaped cells, hence the term astro in the name. What do they do? tons of things, right? So they provide structural support. They actually anchor neurons to blood vessels so those neurons can get the appropriate nutrients and gases and get rid of wastes and carbon dioxide. They will absorb and recycle neurotransmitters. They will actually form scar tissue after injury. In addition, they are going to help maintain the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is going to be this structure that is going to keep the central nervous system isolated from certain things in blood, which include certain hormones and chemicals and toxins. So if you take a look at that diagram, you can see that the, at the distal end of the processes that astrocytes have, there are these little foot-like processes. Those little feet will actually surround blood vessels and be so tight that they help provide or create a barrier that is very hard to permeate, which means that they will help regulate the ion, ions, the nutrients, and the gas concentrations in this interstitial fluid that is around neurons because they are forming and maintaining part of the blood-brain barrier. These guys are also going to act like little traffic cops when neurons are growing and developing or moving in certain directions. And they will say, no, you don't want to move that way. You've got to sort of grow this way in order to connect with these guys over here, which is also totally cool. In addition, Recent research, and I should say recent in quotes, it's probably 20 years old, 20 plus years since they've started to look into this. These cells have the ability 
to transmit information. So they are suspected to play a role in helping transmit information around the central nervous system, which is totally cool. We mentioned the oligodendrocytes. So the oligodendrocytes actually produce myelin within the CNS, and you can see the oligodendrocytes marked there. They help provide framework within the CNS because they're going to help stabilize axons as they produce that myelin. The processes of those cells are going to wrap the axon with layers and layers and layers of myelin, and they will create that myelin sheath. And why do we care? Because those myelin sheaths are going to speed up the transmission of an action potential or an impulse to 250 or 300 miles an hour, which is incredible. We'll talk how that happens. We'll talk about how that happens. I want to get to the neurophys part of this section. I like this because it very clear, clearly shows you what an oligodendrocyte would look like. You can see the neuron, you can see the axons, and you can see the oligodendrocyte making multiple myelin sheaths for multiple axons. Let me repeat that. Oligodendrocytes make multiple myelin sheaths for multiple neurons. Totally cool. So that gives you a list of and associated videos with neuroglia of the CNS and neuroglia of the PNS. So in the PNS, you will see that they're only the Schwann cells, which we discussed, and satellite cells. Hmm. We have two types of neuroglia in the PNS. We know that Schwann cells are going to produce the, you got it, myelin sheaths. They may also actually participate a little bit in axon repair. The satellite cells are going to surround the neuronal cell bodies in the PNS, and they can help regulate environment around those neurons. And they kind of, they think they kind of have similar roles as the astrocytes, but they're not absolutely positively sure what the satellite cells do. FYI. This shows you a Schwann cell wrapping myelin around and around and around and around an axon. They look like those, oh, those chocolate logs, those chocolate rolls. You have to have a layer of chocolate cake with frosting in between and you just roll it around and around and around and around. We used to have those holidays when I was a kid. The plug in the middle, this part in the middle is the axon, and all of this is going to be that lipoprotein, which is myelin. And this on the outermost border or boundary of the cell will actually be the Schwann cell. That's a nucleus. Oops, let me back up. That's a nucleus of the Schwann cell. And this shows you the same thing, showing the myelination of an axon in the PNS. So the yellow part, which kind of turned brownish, is a myelin. This, or this is the, sorry, this is the Schwann cell. It's surrounding the axon and it's starting to sort of overlap and overlap and overlap and creating myelin. So this is the Schwann cell. This is the myelin, and the blue plug in the middle is going to be the axon. And I put this in here because it shows you a neuron with an axon, which has myelin on it. There is a single nucleus associated with a myelin sheath. So as soon as you see a single nucleus associated with a myelin sheath, you need to realize that that is a Schwann cell. And we know by definition, Schwann cells are only within the peripheral nervous system. So sure enough, this axon is within the peripheral nervous system. And then it shows you a neuromuscular junction, which starts to tie in a bunch of the information you just learned and that you learned in the muscular system. <laughs> 